Didn't expect Sonic 2 to slap harder than Will Smith at the Oscars, but here we are. I'm a massive Sonic the Hedgehog fan, so if this doesn't feel in line with my other videos, I really don't give a shit. I'm not going to be objective here, because this is one of the rare times when I left the theater going, Fucking yeah! Woo! This movie had heart. There were tender moments and there were hilarious moments. Jim Carrey is at his Jim Carreyest, and it's an absolute dynamite match for this kind of material, and the introduction of Tails and Knuckles are just knocked out of the park. Objective acknowledgements, this movie has some plot contrivances, a little bit of bloat, and I couldn't give less of a shit. Some jokes fall flat, but are entirely inoffensive and on character. This movie wasn't made for critics, and it knows it, and when a film knows what it is, it lets me actually kick back and enjoy it. I know I'm not watching something that thinks it's accomplishing God's work. It knows what it is, it loves what it is, and God damn it, so do I. Dr. Robotnik has returned to Earth to get revenge on the Blue Blur, and this time he's enlisted some help from a devastatingly badass opponent for Sonic named Knuckles. Jim Carrey is an absolute blast to watch on screen, and it looks like he's having a blast playing Robotnik. He's a key cog to this movie's success, and if he's really done acting after this movie, there's going to be a huge hole in the third entry of this franchise. As the foil to a schizophrenic, fast-talking, and fast-paced main character, you need someone who's as frantic to counter him, and Jim Carrey feels like the only actor in Hollywood who could do this. Who gives us a fucking Limp Biscuit reference that lands that good? I'll bet a dollar and a handshake that was improvised. There's no way someone wrote that. Hey, I need Robotnik to betray someone. I don't know what to have him say though. Jim Carrey's playing him, right? Yeah. Just have him do some fucking Jim Carrey shit. Dude, that's fucking brilliant. Why didn't I fucking think of that? And Knuckles? Holy shit, what a highlight. I was worried how they were going to characterize him, but they absolutely nailed it and subverted my expectations here. He's basically a combination of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor, and I mean that as a major compliment. His people are completely literal. Metaphors are gonna go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. Um, I don't understand. Why am I angry at the enemy ball? This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Oh, you're really heavy! That's because I have one million percent muscle! Fast the fuck! He has heart and a major place in the story, and his burgeoning relationship with Sonic over the course of the movie feels genuinely earned. Yeah, I'm saying this about a fucking kids movie. How you like that shit? Tails was introduced at the end of the first movie, and I was a little worried he was going to be obnoxious and have that storyline of the annoying kid who looks up to his idol. The movie was like, Expectation subverted, bitch. And his character does indeed look up to Sonic, but he's not a drag on him. He's a huge help and makes for one of the sweetest and heartwarming character moments in the entire movie. I was an adult watching a fucking kids movie, so I looked around the theater to make sure no one saw my reaction. While the human characters are generally here for grounding us in reality, they're inoffensive and the leads playing Sonic's parents are charming like they were in the first movie. They don't overstay their welcome, and besides a subplot that could have been removed, Sonic's adoptive parents are fun to have in the film, unlike, say, the human characters in the Godzilla series or the fucking Transformers. Fire! Ah! Yeah, we got a fire! Watch my watch my watch no! Can you stop? Watch the foot! Watch your foot! Whoa! Whoa! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! This is a video game adaptation, and those are almost exclusively one big pile of shit. So why does this movie work so fucking well? How did it avoid the movie equivalent of Keanu Reeves taking a shit? Game adaptations that have worked have avoided this pitfall because, well, they don't really adapt the games they're adapting. How can you realistically adapt a 20, 30, or 40 hour game appropriately? Ask Uncharted how that worked out. In some ways, it's like trying to cram a season's worth of television into a two hour film. It's going to feel over stuffed and completely hollow because it tries to jam-pack meta-references, easter eggs, and a full storyline that should be a 12-episode series into a matinee showing. Not to mention the inherent goofiness and over-the-top shit that comes with most video games, and you try and figure that shit out for the big screen. You know how Marvel avoided those pitfalls when they were adapting comic storylines? They did it because they completely changed them. That's how. Civil War wasn't the comic Civil War. Infinity War and Endgame weren't the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. And Sonic isn't the Sonic game. What do these things do well, though? They take the essence of what makes them so great and puts them into a much more consumable and smaller scale package. Sonic the character is completely intact. His characterization is exactly as he is, and that is undoubtedly the most important aspect. It's why the new Mortal Kombat movie might have been much better served focusing on less characters and a smaller scale storyline. 
Detective Pikachu, while not a masterpiece, succeeded because it wasn't trying to tell a story about a trainer collecting eight badges and going to the Pokemon League. Can you imagine that shit working in a two hour fucking movie? Jesus Christ. The first Sonic movie took him into a hyper real version of Earth and after earning our interest based on Sonic's character alone, and a few fun easter eggs along the way, it earned the right to start introducing the more fantastic elements from the games. Sonic 2 is where we get an actual Sonic game level within the context of the movie and it works because it was grounded in something familiar and then building it up from there. It's why we can accept the multiverse in the MCU now, because the MCU started with a more grounded hero in Iron Man and earned our attention and suspension of disbelief as the franchise progressed. Look, bottom line, Sonic 2 nails it. If you are looking forward to this, you're going to love it. If you enjoyed the first movie, you're getting it tenfold this time. Oh yeah, and stay after the credits. That alone had me going, Fucking yeah! In conclusion, this movie is not Keanu Reeves taking a shit. Till next time, GG's only.